Good evening. It's good to be back in God's house again tonight. Good to see this good number out on Sunday evening worship service. I enjoyed the service this morning. And I want to thank the church for their vote of confidence in me this morning. Pray for me. I need your prayers. That Lord will keep moving, keep using me, folks. Let's, let's be obedient. Whatever God wants us to do, let's do it. If God puts a song on your heart, let's sing it. If God puts a testimony on your heart, let's get up and testify. If we will be obedient, well, God will keep blessing. Good for me to be here. Has anybody got a testimony, prayer request, anything you like to say? Remember that in prayer. That's the most important thing. You know, you can, you, you can go to heaven. You can start to heaven sick, but you won't be sick when you get there. But boy, you have to be born again as I preach this morning if you're going to make it to heaven. Anyone else have a testimony or prayer request? Anybody before we come and pray? Anybody got any unspoken? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, remember that in prayer. I requested prayer for uh, our neighbor this morning. He's going to have to have his foot amputated. And I talked to him this week about his salvation. And he told me he thought everything was all right. Pray for him. I didn't like that answer. We need to know that we, if we've been saved or not. So pray for him tonight. Is anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that in prayer. Anyone else? Remember that in prayer tonight. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Remember that tonight. Anyone else? If no one else, everyone would like to, let's come around and go to the Lord in prayer. And we'll get into the service. Thank you. 
Maybe you bring that guitar. Man, I'd like to hear that again. You got that guitar? Sing it. Huh? Boy, I like that. Oops. <laughs> huh? Good, that's good. You want to sing it? Huh? That's good. You want to sing it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Boy. Julie's been getting on to me for getting, trying to get Brady to sing. He said, leave her Brady alone. He don't want to sing. Boy, I enjoy Brady singing. He's got a talent for the Lord. I can, I can, boy. <laughs> I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be annoying, Brady. I enjoy you singing. You got a talent for the Lord. Well, you need to use it. Anybody else got a song, Billy? Huh? That memory will be obedient. You got a song that the Lord's put on your heart, Daniel. Up in the booth, you got a song, Carol. You don't have to listen to me preach every night. We can just turn this into a good song service tonight. Good for me to be here. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be looking to some Scripture. We preached in John chapter 3 this morning. Turn over one more chapter to John chapter 4. Going to be looking at some verses of Scripture found in John chapter 4, starting with uh, verse 3. And the thought that I've had, I've been thinking about how people are searching for peace Searching for satisfaction. You look at the world today. Folks, are they not searching for something? Is there not an emptiness of void? Why do people turn to alcohol? Drugs. Why do people work, 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 bury themselves in work? Why do they turn to sex? Whatever it might be. Folks, I believe that they're searching for something. There's an emptiness. There's a void in their life. We're going to look at the woman at the well tonight. Boy, she was searching for something, and she found it in Jesus. Boy, one night, I was searching for something, and I found it in Jesus. It's good. When you find your place, let's stand in honor of reading God's Word. We'll read several verses, not starting with verse 3. John chapter 4, verse 3 says, He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through so Mary, boy, I like that. I'm glad Jesus had a need to pass my way one day. We'll come back to that in a minute. There's a lot in that. One verse there. It said, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Shachar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of that water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up, into everlasting life. Boy, I like that. I'm glad I got a drink.
drink of that water one night, folks. I was lost on my way to hell. And folks, I got a drink of that living water. Aren't you glad that you're saved tonight? You may be seated. I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this good day that you blessed us with. Lord, thank you for the reading of your word, Lord. Pray that you just be with me just for a little while, Lord. Give me the words today to say, Lord, season this message with the sweet Holy Spirit. Lord, pray that you just touch hearts. If they be in need, whatever it might be, Lord, just speak to that heart. Pray that you just help us as Christians, Lord. Go out to a lost and dying world and tell them about you. Lord, we love you and thank you for everything. For in Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. I'm going to try to calm down a little bit tonight. I thought I was going to just lay back, but I can't do nothing calm. If you ask my wife, everything I do, I have to do wide open, it seems like. But I'm going to try to slow it down just a little bit. I've about lost my voice this morning, so pray for me. I'll try to scale it back just a little bit. If I can, I don't know if I can. But here I was thinking, what a contrast here between this morning's sermon and tonight's sermon. What a contrast between Nicodemus and this woman at the well. One was a man. One was a woman. One was a ruler. One was a social outcast. One was a Jew. One was a Samaritan. Boy, there's a big difference in these two here. One came in the cover of the darkness. One come in the middle of the night. But boy, I thought about one thing. They had one thing in common. You know what that was? What does each and every one of us have in common? Folks, we all were lost needing a Savior. It didn't matter if you was the rich ruler like Nicodemus or this poor social outcast of a woman. But folks, they both needed to be saved. They both needed to hear about Jesus Let's look at this woman just for a little while. Verse 3 said, He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Shachar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now you get your Bible map and look at it. Jesus and his disciples are leaving Judea, heading north to Galilee, is what they were doing. And to get there, you could go three different routes. The shortest route was to go through Samaria. That was the shortest route. Or you could go up the coastline, or you could go the harder way, crossing the Jordan River two times. You know what the Jews did most of the time? They went the long way around. They did not want to go through Samaria. Why? Because the Samaritan people were an outcast. They were a nobody. They come about when the Assyrians came in and took the ten northern tribes into captivity. They hauled off all the people and left the, the nobodies behind. And then they brought in other Gentile nations and they mixed and married. And boy, these were outcasts. The Jewish people hated these people. They were nobodies. And boy, I can see the disciples talking to Jesus. Don't go through Samaria. Don't go through that. These people are nobodies. I'm sure the disciples didn't want to go. But Jesus went through Samaria. Jesus was on a divinely appointed Message, message, folks. He was on a, a mission. Jesus was going to the cross to die for our sins. He was on a mission. It was necessary for Jesus to go through Samaria. Why was it necessary, folks? Because Jesus knew that there was a little Samaritan girl that was needing a touch from the Master. He knew that this little girl was needing something. Must needs go through Samaria. Folks, I'm glad that Jesus needed to come my way one Wednesday night. I talked about this a lot. I know, but little 13 year old boy, boy, I was miserable. I, I was in a terrible condition. I could not sleep. I was scared to go to sleep at night. And, and you might say, well, you couldn't have been that wicked, no. But I was just as lost, folks, as that murderer, whatever it might be, that adulterer. I was on my way to hell. But I'm glad that Jesus passed my way that Wednesday night. Aren't you glad that Jesus passed your way one day? It was much needs that Jesus go through. So, Mary, I'm glad Jesus passed my way one day. Boy, that's good. Bible says, verse 6, 
Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well and it was about the sixth hour. This would be 12 o'clock in the day. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. You notice that. Jesus was weary. Jesus was thirsty. You know what that shows, folks? That shows us the human side of Jesus. See, he was a hundred percent man and he was a hundred percent God. Jesus was got tired, folks. He felt pain just like me or you. Jesus was thirsty. I think about that every time I, it mentions Jesus being thirsty. The man who created the great Nile River, the man who created the Mississippi River, all the oceans, he was thirsty. On the cross, he said, I thirst. Folks, Jesus felt the pain just like me or you. That's the reason Jesus can identify with us. Why? Because he walked in our shoes on this old earth. Folks, God the Father, he knows what we're going through. Why? Because his son walked on this earth. That's the same as God the Father walking here. Jesus has walked in our shoes. Aren't you glad that Jesus can identify with us? Boy, I'm glad we have a patient Savior. He sat there in the heat of the day waiting patiently for this little girl that he knew was going to come. Folks, I'm glad that Jesus waited patiently on me. My God had been under conviction probably for two years. Coming to church Sunday after Sunday, hearing the preacher get up and preach, and I would go out the doors miserable in the same condition. Folks, Jesus waited patiently on me. He didn't have to. All he has to do is give us one opportunity. But Jesus waited patiently on me. Waited on him. Boy, Jesus knew the purpose Jesus knew from the foundation of the world, folks, that this little girl was going to need the Savior. She was going to need to talk to somebody. Jesus knew that. Have you ever thought about the foreknowledge of God? Jesus knew from the foundation of the world that he was going to have to come and pay the sin debt of the world. Think about knowing in advance how much pain you was going to have to go through, folks. But yet he stepped off the throne. He took off his robe and his crown and told the Father, said, prepare me a body and I will go and be a sacrifice. I will pay for Doug Mathis' sins and the sins of the world. Jesus knew all that. Yes, he was willing to come. Boy, I thank God that he was willing to come. Boy, this young lady... Why did she come in the middle of the day, in the heat of the day? I read and studied about that. Most women came in the cool of the morning or the cool of the evening to get water. You want me to tell you the reason why she come? Because she wanted to avoid other people. Folks, people made fun of this lady. People pointed out that she was an outcast and nobody. But guess what? Jesus loved her. Aren't you glad that Jesus loves the nobody? Folks, he loves that drunkard man. He loves that homeless person, the alcoholic, the murderer, whoever it might be. Folks, Jesus loves them. He died for them. For the whole world could be saved if they'd only turn to Jesus. And what to get me a drink of water? My throat's going to give out. I said I was going to be calm, didn't I? Oh, that's good. Verse 8 says, For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Well, that stuck out to me, that verse 8. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Now, here I got a picture in my mind. The disciples are heading out to Samaria. She's coming from Samaria. They had to pass each other somewhere, didn't they? I can see them disciples going way around her, not even looking at her, folks. The disciples of Jesus, because they had no dealings with the Samaritan. She was an outcast. She was a nobody. 
I thought about the man that fell among thieves on the Jericho road. Did I preach out here? I think I did, didn't I? The man that fell among thieves on the Jericho road. The priest passed him by. The Levite passed him by. They did nothing to help that person. Folks, that represented the law. That represented the sacrificials. It did nothing, folks. To take away sin. But boy, that good Samaritan, it represented Jesus. What did he do? He come by, he got off of his beast, and he come, got down and he doctored that man. He took care of him. He got up, put him on that animal. He walked and he led him to the inn. He gave that innkeeper some money. Said, now you take care of him. If this is not enough, I will pay you the rest. Folks, Jesus is that good Samaritan. Folks, the disciples passed him on by. They did nothing. Jesus did not pass this girl by. She had probably shocked this woman because Jesus asked her for a drink. Him being a Jew, I read where Jewish men didn't even talk to a lady out in public. She had probably shocked that Jesus spoke to her. Folks, Jesus lay aside social customs. He lay aside all that. This woman's soul was what mattered to Jesus. Folks, Jesus came to seek and to save those that was lost. That's what mattered to Jesus. Third chapter, it was Nicodemus that Jesus come to. Here in the fourth chapter, folks, it was this lady at the well. It didn't matter whether you was rich or you was poor. It does not matter your status of life, whether you're male, female, rich or poor. Jesus came to seek and to save those that was lost. Boy, that's good. Verse 10 says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that live in water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself? and his children and his cattle. Notice what Jesus did there. What, what did he do? He drew this young lady into a conversation. Think of the opportunities that we have each and every day on our jobs to draw people into an everyday conversation in a roundabout way. Let it tie right back to Jesus some way. And I preached about this this morning. How often do we talk about the news, sports, politics? We go everywhere but Jesus. We talk about everything. Why can we not talk about Jesus? Notice what Jesus did. He drew her into conversation. He got her curious, wondering about some things. Folks, if we can only get people curious... Wandering about some things. Hear us talking about the services we've been having at Oakra Hill Church. Boy, they get to say, what's going on there? We need to come and check that out. Folks, we get excited about everything but being a Christian, it seems like. We need to get excited about being a Christian. Draw people into everyday conversation. And before it's over, tell them about Jesus in some way. I need help with that. I have opportunity after opportunity. Lost people all around me at Western. If I'm not real careful, I'll talk about everything but Jesus. Folks, Jesus should be our focus all day long. Tell them about Jesus. Jesus was going to point out some things to her. Who he was. What he had to offer and how she could get it. Folks, is that not our job as Christians? To tell people who Jesus is, what he can do for them, and how they can get it. Nicodemus, said, he didn't say why. He said how. He said how. Folks, when people, they start asking why. They start how can this happen. You have to get people lost before you can get them saved. Get them curious asking questions, and then tell them about the plan of salvation. This woman didn't understand what he was talking about. Jesus was talking about physical water. Nicodemus didn't understand this more. He thought Jesus was talking about a physical birth. Jesus was talking about a spiritual birth. 
He's not talking about physical water here, folks. He's talking about spiritual water. She did not understand. She was confused. Folks, the world is confused today. If we don't explain it to them, who will? It's our job to explain the plan of salvation to a lost and dying world. That's our job. Jesus was talking about spiritual water. What was he offering her? He was offering her eternal life. Folks, he offered it to Nicodemus this morning in his sermon. He told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He was offering that to him. Verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Boy, Jesus was offering this girl lady something different, wasn't he? Something that she had never experienced before. And I thought about her. No doubt her life had been a disappointment. She maybe thought when she got married the first time, she said, boy, I'm going to be with this man forever. Guess what? Marriage number one, it did not last. We don't know whose fault it was. Marriage number two did not last. Marriage number three did not last. Marriage number four did not. Marriage number five. Boy, we got a pretty good picture of who fault it was now. You might get one bad husband, but are you going to get five bad husbands? <laughs> this lady had a problem, folks. She had a problem. She was a problem. But boy, she needed Jesus, didn't she? And this lady here, she had a problem. She had tried everything. She had tried marriage five times. And she said, I'm not going to worry about marriage anymore. We're just going to live together, folks. Is that not what the world is thinking today? We don't have to get married. We'll just live together. Folks, we can't do that as Christians. We need to get married. Folks, God honors marriage. He does not honor people living together. That didn't cost you nothing. People try everything in life to get satisfaction. They try everything, whatever it might be, alcohol, drugs, sex, Money. This lady had tried everything. Folks, she had looked for pleasure and satisfaction in what? In men, folks. And she had been left empty. There was still an emptiness, a void in her life. Thought about King Psalm. I've been working on a message that I hope I get to preach here about King Psalm. And I, King Psalm is a great example for us as Christians. King Psalm. Boy, he started out good, didn't he? Wisest man that's ever been. Tried all the pleasures that was out there. He tried all the pleasures in women. Read about him. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. He tried in money. King Solomon was the richest man. The richest king that you will read about. He had more money than he would ever spend. He tried it in wisdom. Smartest man that's ever been. Nobody's been any smarter than King Psalm. He had fine houses, vineyards, servants, everything that you would need. But along the way, King Solomon took his eyes off God and he walked away from God. Oh, what did God have to do to him? God had to take King Solomon to the woodshed. You ever been taken to the woodshed? Boy, I've been taken to the woodshed before. When God takes you to the woodshed, you'll know. God told King Solomon, I'm going to rend the kingdom from your hands. King Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes looking back over a misspent life. Look at the potential King Solomon had. He said, vanity of vanities. All is vanity is what King Solomon said. What does vanity mean, folks? It means empty. It means worthless. Of no value. What did King Solomon figure out? A life without God is wasted. No purpose, no value, folks. Boy, he learned a hard lesson, King Solomon did. They tried everything. I'm afraid the world today, they're trying to find peace. They're trying to find satisfaction, but they're looking in all the wrong places. Folks, it's our job as Christians. I believe the world is searching and looking for 
for somebody to just tell them about Jesus. And that's our job as Christians, to be that light to a lost and dying world. Boy, she said, sir... Give me this water. That's what I said when I come to the altar right now. I went as far as I could go. Boy, I was thirsty. I wanted a taste of that water. She wanted some of this water that she would never thirst again. And folks, she left a changed woman. What are you talking about, preacher? Go on and read a little bit more. Verse 28 says, The woman then left her water pot. Boy, she left some things behind, didn't she, when she met Jesus. She left her water pot behind. I preached about that this morning. When Jesus comes in, folks, that old devil gets put out. There's going to be a difference in your life. You're going to leave some things behind. She left the water pot behind. She said, verse 29, Come see a man which told me all the things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Folks, what did she have after she met Jesus? She had a testimony. Each and every one of us, we should have a testimony. When we leave this church tonight, let's go out next week and let's let our light shine, folks. Let's have a testimony to a lost and dying world. You never know how many people maybe got saved because she went back to the town and told them, boy, I met a man that told me my whole life story. Come see this man, folks. The world is waiting. They're wanting us to tell them about Jesus. I believe God places each and every one people in front of us that we can reach more effectively than anyone else. That's the message. Folks, I hope and pray that I've said something that's been a help to someone. Would they be a need here tonight? Everybody looks good to me, but would they be a need? Maybe you just want to come pray about something tonight. Maybe you just want to be a better Christian tonight. Does anybody need to come pray tonight? Give out. Y'all preaching me to death. No. <laughs> oh, I need a stronger voice. Anybody, it's been good for me to be in God's house tonight. Good to be saved. I'm glad that I have that peace. I know you get tired of me talking about my peace, folks. But there's nothing like this peace that you have after you get saved. Money can't buy that. Nothing wrong with money. But it does not buy peace that Jesus can give. Anybody got a testimony? Yeah. 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 I think it's been very, very great to see every single time I've been here in this church to see that light does not really fade away. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. We're supposed to be the light. In the Old Testament, Israel was supposed to be the light to the Gentile nations. Boy, the church. Who is the church? We're the church. We're supposed to be the light to a lost and dying world. Today, anyone else? Brady, you got a song now? (laughs) Anybody, Daniel, Carol? We can go home if you want to. We can keep worshiping. All right. I did my part. If you want to take a whooping, you'll just have to take a whooping. (laughs) No, I'm just playing. (laughs) Anybody else got anything like to say for the Lord? No, I appreciate everybody singing and everything. It's good to be. Yeah. Get that water. Exactly. Nothing like it, are they? Like it. I got a drink of that living water. Never forgot. Never, ta- never tasted anything like that living water. You get a taste of that. That's the reason it bothers me. People can just be in church and out of church. I can't get away from it, folks. This living water, that peace. See, I've been out of God's will. I've lost my peace and joy before. I didn't say you lose yourself. I said my peace and joy. I was out of God's will for a long time, running from preaching. Miserable. Trying to teach Sunday school. Try that out for a while. Trying to teach Sunday school, knowing that you should be preaching. Boy, I promise God, 
when I, when I surrendered my call. And that peace come back. Boy, I said, I'll never want to be in this position again. And I don't. In the center of God's will, there's nothing like it. Anybody else got a testimony or anything? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't pretend to be nobody great. I'm just a simple man trying to do a simple job the best way that I can. So just keep praying for it. It's nothing that I'm doing. It's what God's doing through me. Just trying to be obedient is what I'm trying to do. Anyone else? What's well, good? Y'all want to go home? We want to keep testifying. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. I know that. I can feel everybody praying. Everybody would ask me, said, well, how's it going down there? I said, well, I can tell you one thing. I have liberty when I get up and preach. Folks, that's all a preacher can ask for is to have liberty. You don't have liberty everywhere you go. Some churches you think you would have liberty. Guess what? You don't have liberty. I've had liberty here, and I appreciate that. Anyone else? Just going off of that and going off of everyone else, like I said, it's, uh, it's very nice and, and a great thing to hear people, someone to get up in front and tell the whole gospel truth as it is and not as what you want to hear. Yeah. And hear it with the family you did. Yeah. So we need it to be better. Yeah. Appreciate y'all. Anyone else? If not, be praying for the Wednesday night. Serves the Lord's closet. I enjoyed that last time. That was my first time. Boy, that's a good work. You never know that act of kindness. Helping someone. That's what it's all about. Folks, and I was going to talk about that tonight. We'll never win someone to the Lord by downgrading them. By telling them how sorry that they are. But boy, we can win by showing them love. The love of Christ. That's what it's all about. Anyone else? I'll get back to preaching. I got some water in me now. <laughs> if not, we will stand and I'll ask Brother Rob to dismiss us in prayer. Thank you.